The members of the British royal family gave us plenty of moments to talk about this week. Moments ranging from inspirational to embarrassing. And I want to talk about all of it. So with that said, let's look at all of the royal related moments from the week. On Tuesday, Charles and Camilla broke out their golden carriage once again to attend the state opening of Parliament. And although the British monarch has been participating in this for many years, the citizens of the UK greeted Charles quite differently than they have Queen Elizabeth in the past. As with most of Charles's public outings of late, it was marked with protests and shouts of Not My King. According to Republic, the anti-monarchy group who led the protests, over 500 people turned out for this event. And for Charles, someone who we know thrives off the approval of others, this has to have had an impact. For over 70 years, he watched his mother be loved and adored by the UK citizens and waited for his turn. But when the Queen passed, the love and adoration passed with her. Charles is not a monarch many want to follow, possibly because it's difficult to watch a man step out of a golden carriage and sit on a golden throne and promise his people that the cost of living crisis will improve, or listen to a man who for his entire life sounded the alarm on climate change, read a prepared speech that praises investments in oil and gas. Moments like this only emphasize his inability to pursue any actionable change. And because someone forgot to check their calendar, or possibly intentionally, as there does seem to be some tension, Tuesday was also the day of William's Earthshot Awards. And even though I don't actively seek information about things that William does, I usually see articles or photos of his events come across my social media. But with Earthshot, that didn't happen. There was so little coverage of this event that I had to work to find information on it. Even the tabloids didn't seem interested. And the few articles they were writing about Willie's Singapore trip were not at all focused on Earthshot. The Daily Mail continued to try to push William as a sex symbol, but also are clearly trolling him. Because there is no way they used this photo with that caption, and it wasn't intentional. Of all the photos they could have chosen to represent just how handsome he supposedly is, this is the best one. In the grossest moment of the week, we learned that William let an eight-month-old baby suck on his finger. After shaking the hands of a long line of complete strangers, he actually put his finger inside a baby's mouth. A baby who is not his. What was he thinking? And honestly, what were the parents thinking because I would have snatched my baby back so fast? That is unsanitary, and as a dad, William should know better. On his last day in Singapore, William told journalists that he wants to go a step further than his family and bring real change to the causes he supports. He said instead of spotlighting many causes, he wants to focus on a few, and his goal is to be seen as a social leader. And besides the fact that he is wrong in saying that other members of his family have not brought actual change and impact to social causes, what he's really describing is exactly what Harry and Meghan are doing. William keeps saying he wants to do something. He wants to make an impact. He wants to be a leader. Well, then stop talking about it and do it. Leaders and changemakers don't announce that they are going to lead and bring change. They do the work and make things happen. William is 41 years old and has been the Prince of Wales for over a year now. He's already creating his legacy, and right now it's a lot of talk and little action. Despite Charles's dress-up day and William's declaration that someday he will do something, Harry still managed to overshadow them both with his video message for Stand Up For Heroes. And I'm not going to go into the details of that video because I already did in a previous video, but I will say it is almost comical that the tabloids were so outraged over Harry's message being played the same day. If his three-minute pre-recorded video from his garden in Montecito can outshine Charles's speech and Willie's traveling climate show, that sounds like a William and Charles problem and not a Harry problem. Speaking of a William and Charles problem, The Guardian, in a tribunal on Wednesday, argued that the Home Office should publicly reveal the cost to the taxpayer of providing security to the royal family. They requested a total figure from the years 2017 through 2020, but they did not ask for a breakdown of the numbers or how much was spent on any individual person. 
the home office in their defense said that this could pose a security risk to the royal family, although the Guardian's barristers said that the home office was unable to present any evidence as to why this would be a security risk. The two judges presiding on the tribunal will publish their decision at a later date. In other royal-related court news, a judge ruled today that Prince Harry's court case against Associated Newspapers, which owns the Daily Mail, the Mail on Sunday, and the Mail Online, will move forward to trial. Harry is one of seven claimants in this case, including Sir Elton John and his husband David Furnish and Baroness Doreen Lawrence. The claimants allege that Associated Newspapers used illegal methods of information gathering, such as listening devices in their cars, blagging to obtain medical and financial information, phone hacking, and even burglary. During the initial hearing, Associated argued that the claims have been brought too late, as some of the events are from decades ago, but the judge did not agree, and he said that each of the claimants were able to successfully argue that new evidence had come to light that they had not known previously. In his witness statement from March of this year, Harry said that after realizing information was withheld from him by the institution, he decided to bring this case forward because of the treatment of both his mother and Meghan by the press, but also because he loves his country and he is deeply concerned about the unchecked power, influence, and criminality of associated newspapers. He says their journalists are criminals and the British public deserve to know the full extent of the cover-up. In the judge's ruling, he states that the claimants had a real prospect of demonstrating not only that the unlawful acts were concealed from them, but also further devices were employed by associated to throw the subjects off the scent. Associated released a statement today, and they still maintain that the claims are preposterous. A trial date has not yet been announced, but this could mean that we see Harry return to the witness stand yet again. And my favorite royal-related moment of the week is this photograph, taken as Charles and Camilla make their way to Parliament. This moment could not be recreated if they tried, with the perfect placement of the sign declaring Charles not my king, showing through the window of his golden carriage as it passes. It feels as if this photograph has captured a significant turning point in history. Years from now, when the monarchy has collapsed and people look back on where it all went wrong, this photograph will help tell the story of an image-obsessed king whose focus on finding the love and affection he never had ultimately drove away both his subjects and his children.